Hi and welcome to my channel dedicated to my autonomous rover based on an Arduino Due and a high precision GNSS module, the Neo M8P from Ublox. This rover was developed between October 2016 and May 2017 in the context of my baccalaureate diploma, an academic qualification that French students take at the end of high school. This series of video will share my experience and potentially help others. In my case, I'm deeply grateful for all the online tutorials and instructables which helped me realize this rover with accurate GPS positioning. The following videos will touch upon the assembly of the mechanical chassis which is based on a tank TB300 platform purchased on internet. Next, I will describe the acquisition and control chain managed by an Arduino Due 32 bits. The acquisition chain is here depicted in green. It is made of a magnetometer HMC5883L connected to an Arduino over an I2C interface and a high precision GNSS module, the Neo M8P from Ublox. The Neo M8P is mounted on an application board, the C94-M8P, also from Ublox, and communicates with the Arduino module over an USB interface and via yeah, USB shield from the Arduino project. The control chain is depicted in red. It basically consists of a motor shield driven by some general purpose IO pins of the Arduino Due module. Finally, the user interface is provided by an LCD and a set of push buttons. Notice here that the 32 bits architecture of the Due is an absolute prerequisite to achieve centimeter level accuracy. The typical 8-bit entry-level microprocessors and controllers used by Arduino provide only 6 to 7 decimal digits of floating point precision, and this is not sufficient as we will discuss later in one of the videos. This picture shows the overhaul assembly as a stack. The I.O. keyboard and magnetometer connected on top of the motor shield, which is plugged on top of the USB module, itself being stacked over the Arduino module. The GNSS module Neo M8P of Ublox uses the concept of a rover and a base station to implement a real-time kinematic or RTK positioning technique. The C94-M8P application board can either be configured as a base station or as a rover as indicated by the letters B and R. The C94-M8P includes a UHF radio link, represented here in red. This radio channel allows a short-range communication between the base station and the rover board and is used to transmit a data stream from the base station to the rover, which can then output its relative position with a stunning centimeter level accuracy, assuming a clear sky environment. Before we move on to the software and experimentation part, here are a few pictures of the rover in the field, as if it was used as a GPS controlled mower. In this part, I intend to give an overview of the Arduino C code and its structure. I will, by the way, share it on GitHub as soon as I find the time to clean it. For the user interface, I used an LCD with 20 characters and 4 lines, and five push buttons to navigate the various menus and to enter some settings. There is also an emergency push button for the user to stop any unexpected or uncontrolled behavior of the system. As discussed previously, one of the two C94-M8P must be configured as a base station. It is then important to set it up firmly and for several minutes, if not hours, before using the rover. This is because the base station needs to average its stationary position over time. Therefore, the longer it operates, the better will be the accuracy of the correction broadcasted to the rover. The first thing I tried to do was to measure a distance with the positioning system. I drew a few of the following patterns on the floor with a piece of chalk for the 30 cm circles and red paint for the dot in the center. Next, I placed the platform over the first pattern and I triggered the system to geolocate the rover and to record its position in memory. 
I typically refer to such a record as a waypoint because a sequence of such point defines the route that the rover must follow by connecting waypoints in a straight line. The LCD shows the latitude and longitude of the first waypoint A. Next, I move the rover to a second waypoint called B. The system is now going to provide us with an additional information, which is the distance between waypoint A and waypoint B. The distance is reported on the LCD with the indication DST and is showing 18.0 meters. This was consistent with the 17.8 meters that I determined with a measuring tape. Furthermore, this difference of 20 centimeters was also not too bad given the location did not offer a clear sky environment. There were indeed trees, a metallic fence and houses nearby. Here is a screenshot from Google Maps showing the site where I did my first experiments. Despite these non-optimal conditions, the rover was able to approach the programmed waypoints with a precision of the order of 1 meter as shown on this video. Notice the cable between the rover and my hand. This is not a remote control but a simple emergency button that allows me to keep control over the program of the autonomous rover. In other words, the program executes if and only if I press the button. As the program of the rover was sometimes making strange and unexpected decisions, I decided to try and recalibrate the magnetometer sensor. That's the moment when I realized how strong the magnet of the GNSS antenna actually was, and how much it was deceiving the magnetometer because the two devices were mounted too close from each other. Therefore, I started to equip the rover with a 1 meter pole as shown on the current picture. The U-turns and directional changes improved, but not the overall accuracy when reaching the waypoints. As mentioned above, the surrounding trees can obstruct the GPS signal from the satellites and may prevent them to reach the receiver of the rover. On the other hand, nearby fences and buildings may create multipath error when the signal from the GPS satellite bounces off them. This bouncing adds extra time for the signal to travel from the satellite to the receiver and this difference is enough to confuse the receiver. Here is an aerial view of the place where I did my next test. As you can see, this is a roundabout and the idea was to force the rover to circle around it by programming a few waypoints. I picked that place because there was no high buildings or big trees in the area and because the houses were more than 15 to 30 meters away. The next problem I faced with my prototype was the absence of brakes combined with the underdimensioned motors. In other words, the design of my platform ended up being too heavy for the little DC 12 volts geared motors of the TB300. Because of this overweight, it was required to always drive the motors at their maximum voltage. As a result, it was impossible to reduce the speed and adjust the precision of the rover when approaching a waypoint. The inertia of the heavy rover and the absence of brakes often led the rover to overshoot its target. I finally managed to get centimeter level accuracy while controlling the speed of the rover myself by activating and deactivating the emergency button as shown on the last video. So that's it for now. If you like the content of this video, don't forget to check out this channel for more details to come in the future on the mechanics, the electronics and the software part.